It's best not to venture into this river without the proper equipment. Its waters are dangerous. Environmentalist Vladimir Chuprov shows me why. The river is contaminated with radioactive material. I'm in the southern Urals with the Greenpeace activists. This is where the Mayak nuclear plant is. It's kept strictly off limits from the outside world. Vladimir Chuprov tells me the radioactivity here at the river is up to 20 times higher than normal. He explains that radioactive material gets into the river, the Teja. It's new material, currently produced by the Mayak plant, from processing nuclear fuel from power plants and research reactors. Chuprov says the Teja has been radioactive since the nuclear plant began operations some 60 years ago. The Soviets pumped waste directly into the river for many years and entire tracts of land were contaminated. That includes the village of Muzliomovo, some 80 kilometers away, which today stands in ruins. The Russian government has been relocating the residents for the past three years. For a long time, the people in Muzliomovo know nothing. They swam in the radioactive river, say Sania and Saki Abdulin, even though the authorities forbade it. They grazed their livestock on the riverbanks and used the water for drinking and watering their gardens. They say they only learned what was happening in 1992, when President Boris Yeltsin visited. He explained that everything here was radioactively contaminated and that they had to be relocated. I am shocked, and I wonder if the mayor of Muzliumovo can explain why the authorities kept quiet for so long. But I get no answer. The mayor tells me everything is fine now, and the relocation is underway. I can tell the subject of Mayak is still uncomfortable for the authorities. I set off to see how the villagers have been relocated. Sania had invited me to her new home, in New Muzliumovo, not even four kilometers away from their old village. The local authorities said that was sufficient. But that makes Sania angry. Her now 46-year-old son was born mentally handicapped. The public health officers say he was damaged by radiation in utero. What does she think about the fact that Germany now wants to send to Mayak nuclear materials that the Soviet Union once shipped to East Germany? Sonia says they don't need it, they're contaminated enough here. She wonders why they're still being so mistreated. They're like guinea pigs. They're constantly being tested, but their health keeps getting worse. I start to see how much the people here consider the Mayak nuclear plant a curse. Is that why the Russians kept the facility such a secret for so long? I show environmentalist Vladimir Chuprov a promotional film about Mayak from the Rosatom State Nuclear Energy Corporation. Foreign journalists like me are basically never allowed access. We're expected to be satisfied with glossy images. Mayak, which means lighthouse, is considered the cradle of the Russian nuclear bomb. The combine employs more than 14,000 people. They process spent nuclear fuel rods for reuse while extracting weapons-grade plutonium. And that, says the Rosatom press office in Moscow, is why the Mayak plant is kept top secret. They say that's no difference from how it is in other nuclear powers like the United States or France, and it has nothing to do with safety deficiencies. Vladimir Chuprov thinks the company wants to earn profits at any cost. 
He says the secret services and police are protective of Rosatom's commercial secrets, the commercial secrets of the nuclear lobby, not just in Russia, but in the whole world. Chupov shows me the extent of the radioactive contamination. The ghost town of Muzliomovo, where I started my trip, is some 80 kilometers south of the nuclear plant. Together, we visit another village, some 70 kilometers northeast of Mayak. The settlement is called Karabolka, and it's home to some 300 people. When there was an explosion in 1957 at Mayak, a radioactive cloud drifted over Karabolka. It was harvest season in the village. Gulchera is Magilova, who's known Chuprov for years, was 11 years old back then. She remembers how the Soviet authorities ordered the village to destroy the entire harvest with no explanation. <laughs> Vladimir Chuprov explains that the radioactivity, which is still a threat to this day, is in the soil. He says that the radioactivity that settled back then is still in the soil and the people here are still affected by it, especially through what they eat, the vegetables and other food they grow. The radioactive particles then contaminate them from within, especially the strontium. Kulchera should really only buy food and firewood that's not from her village because radioactive strontium is stored in bones and teeth, from where it can affect people's health. But her monthly pension of 150 euros isn't enough for that. I can't understand why people like Kulchera aren't also relocated. Vladimir Chuprov says no one can explain why this village hasn't been relocated. They just sealed the wells and shut down the farms, but the people stayed here. They were forbidden to drink from the river or keep livestock. But, he asks, how could that work? So this place has one of the highest rates of cancer in Russia. According to Greenpeace's information, the incidence of cancer here is five times the national average. Kulchera was diagnosed with liver cancer five years ago. She says she's lucky because the cancer is progressing slowly. A schoolgirl, when the explosion at Mayak happened, she had to help in destroying the crops. Afterwards, she had diarrhea and a high fever for weeks. She can't say whether the cancer is from that or from eating contaminated fruit and vegetables from her garden for all these years. But she tells me she's been plagued for years by terrible stomach aches. It makes her furious that nuclear waste is still being brought here to the Urals. She says she doesn't care where it's from, Switzerland, Germany, the US, it doesn't matter. She wonders why they don't process their own fuel rods, why they have to send them here. She figures they probably think the people here are already affected by radioactivity, so it doesn't matter, they'll die anyway. The people in the region are against it, but, she says, no one cares. I can understand the rage and helplessness Kulchera, Ismagilova and other people in the southern Urals feel. Even if I haven't been able to see the Mayak nuclear plant myself, I don't think spent fuel rods should be brought here.